<laughs> Microphone, okay. Yeah, now it's working. So I say I will talk more about UFI insecurity. So uh, my name is Alexander Matrosov, and today I will present in the training the BIOS, going deeper in BIOS guard implementations. Actually, I'm very happy to present on first edition of OffensiveCon because my personal opinion, offensive, it's very important for make defensive stronger, and it was already very right point from the keynote speaker, uh, Rodrigo Branco, and actually I don't see any right uh, path for development teams, how they can make a product stronger without offensive security team, because uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, uh, usual developers don't understand how the right implement the mitigations and security technologies, and uh, like uh, during security development life cycle, somebody should break the things to make it right, right? Okay. So I'm leading uh, embedded security at NVIDIA and uh, I have a lot of experience before in reverse engineering and security research. And actually we dropped some stuff uh, inside the book Rootkits and Bootkits uh, based mostly on uh, uh, legacy bootkits on MBR and VBR infections, but also have very interesting chapters about UFI uh, implants. Um, Actually, uh, this talk, I don't speak from my employer, and all the my opinions, it's mine, and all bad jokes too. Um, the pretty the same presentation, uh, no, actually today, presentation will be different, it's like around 40% of the content, but the title of this presentation being already presented on the USA Black Hat H2C Zero Nights and uh, Blue Hat, and you can find by this link, uh, uh, this presentation, but today's stuff, it's quite new, so. And uh, my motivator being like, okay, it's documentation about the BIOS guard, and uh, it's how Intel see uh, for the public how technology looks like. And for me, it's like, okay, it's quite interesting because here is actually nothing, right? <laughs> about implementation details. And uh, I was actually discussed today um, some things about how uh, I mean, I bias updates working. Uh, where is the problems with current implementations and actually why is the bias guard being created? And uh, also I will discuss some interesting things about the bias guard and one of the thing it's uh, inside the bias uh, updates, it is like uh, bias guard scripting language which, which is during complete and it's pretty interesting, right? Because it's actually uh, executed by ACM model. And also I will show a uh, few uh, new interesting uh, ways how to bypass uh, Intel BootGuard uh, implementation based on American Megatrends. And also uh, I will put a little bit more details about ACM authenticated code models. So uh, actually pretty the same thing already been discussed by Alex Ionescu in his presentation because uh, operating system make much more stronger mitigations against rootkits and uh, actually from, uh, from the firmware it's much more interesting to expose uh, kernel or inject something inside the kernel and ex exploit the modern firmware, it's uh, much more easier. And actually uh, UEFI BIOS, it's over six million uh, lines on the C cloud, which of course has a room for vulnerabilities, right? So. And uh, it was pretty interesting presentation from uh, Intel PCRT on uh, Black Hat last year, uh, where they discussed uh, the bugs and different classes of the bugs. And actually the level of uh, configurational bugs when the vendor uh, make it something different with uh, uh, specification by uh, technology developer and it's make a room for the vulnerability. And it's pretty much interesting, and I will show uh, a few examples today, too. And um, also, I see some uh, trend when uh, some, some of the vendors, cloud, big cloud vendors, like uh, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, trying to uh, make some uh, lock for the root of, of trust and peripheral devices uh, uh, by the hardware and implement their own chips. Uh, 
Google did uh, Titan and uh, Microsoft did Olympus, Olympus. And also, actually, interesting thing, uh, because some of the root of trust moving to the cloud. And uh, it's quite interesting, and I will actually uh, discuss uh, some of the new ACI models appears on Windows Server uh, uh, review versions. So here is a reference if you want to uh, grab more information about these technologies, but today I will focus on another things, but uh, actually also about locking the root of trust in hardware and how we can break it. And, um, uh, but I'm actually very interested to, uh, to look inside the Titan or uh, Microsoft Olympus chip <laughs> too, but it's uh, not uh, common to buy on the market, right? Um, so uh, it's no more actually legacy in, uh, in the BIOS anymore, right? No legacy BIOS. And uh, UEFI, UEFI actually in, in everywhere. And uh, now legacy inside UEFI because uh, uh, different vendors have different cycles for the update their firmware and also the ecosystem of uh, UEFI and firmware is very inconsistent. So it's how many firmwares we have inside the BIOS update. So, and it's quite a lot, right? Uh, here is some CV numbers. Uh, no, not here, but yeah. So um, one of the interesting thing, um, I've been uh, looking different BIOS updates and uh, find, so the BIOS update is signed, but some of the, of these firmwares delivered separately, as example, a banded controller. And uh, it was not. And uh, here is the list of the files from a BIOS update and we can see uh, .bin, and I've been very interested because it's, uh, I will not say the vendor name, but uh, they actually don't sign uh, embedded controller update and also provide separate tool for update uh, this firmware. And I look into the tool and it was pretty straightforward even by the comments. <laughs> so the firmware is not signed and we can use like sign a driver uh, or sign a binary with a sign a driver inside, which is updates the unsigned firmware. And that's cool because like uh, BIOS actually uh, communicating with embedded controller some ways in a new room for like, like attacking the, the, some of the SMM services which is communicating with embedded controller from the firmware inside. And uh, I think a lot of vendors will, will be uh, l look on this picture like uh, security boundary will be not breaking, right? We already updated the firmware and firmware will be, should communicate in the right way with all the SMM services. Yeah. Never underestimate a reverse engineering in your trod model. So, um, what kind of vendors today I will cover? It's Gigabyte, Asus Tech, MSI, and Lenovo, and all vulnerabilities actually there, uh, which will be discussed today. So, it's quite a um, high level view how many uh, different technologies we have to protect the BIOS. And uh, we can see um, different things and most of them it's just log bits which is actually locking uh, some activity from the user mode or from the kernel mode to update the BIOS, as example, BIOS uh, log bit or BIOS write enabled. And also we do have uh, uh, BIOS guard and boot guard which is actually uh, has uh, authenticated code models and partially the technologies implement implemented in these uh, components and uh, these components are verified by uh, microcode. And also uh, spy flash uh, protection by PRX registers, which is uh, raise the bar uh, for uh, a bit more for uh, uh, spy flash write operations, but these three vendors doesn't use this. <laughs> so, and uh, these CVs which have been discovered for Black Hat Talk, and today some of the things will be without CVs. So, um, it's the BIOS, BIOS update process, and uh, usually we have uh, update application, which is communicating with the driver, 
and then the driver copied uh, the BIOS update image in specific memory and uh, called the watchdog over ESMM uh, service, which is actually called from the ring zero. And uh, it can be implemented in two ways. For one of them, it's a semi-flash, and one of them, it's a security semi-flash. And actually, most interesting is security semi-flash because uh, specifically this uh, SMM Dixie driver verifying uh, the signature of the BIOS update. That's mean it's pretty complex parser there. And um, also, uh, I start looking uh, some of the BIOSes and um, they're using like SMI, uh, SEC SMI flash, but this uh, actually dump it from one of the Dell systems where SMI flash still loaded inside SMM. So that means uh, we can communicate uh, with this driver because it's loaded um, and registered in uh, EFI system, oh, uh, runtime services. So, and um, it was quite interesting thing because BIOS updates been uh, uh, checked by uh, secure SMI flash but we can still use this SMI flash and or communicating with this SMI flash driver and this example attack this. So here is uh, actually uh, SMI handlers for security SMI flash. We can see the load image, get policy, and set policy. And get policy actually very interesting because it's the most, uh, most complex parser for, uh, for this driver and it's, uh, it's uh, covered the BIOS update signature verification. And I was quite interested to get in its reconstructed uh, flow from uh, the Dixie driver by pseudo C and uh, say, okay, we have a get policy, which is uh, pass some parameters to, to the function. And uh, inside this function, we have, wow, MMTPI, quite interesting in the parser. And actually, uh, it was one of the main reasons why Intel created the BIOS guard. And uh, BIOS guard is actually armoring uh, BIOS updates because all the verification flow mostly happens uh, inside ACM model, which is actually split uh, security boundaries between SMM and ACM. And also, uh, also, uh, all, all spy flash operation uh, controlled by ACM model. That means even if it will be vulnerability inside ECMM driver, attacker can't actually uh, raise the persistent because uh, it's ACM communicating with the spy flash. But of course, in the real world, uh, that's not true because <laughs> vendors want to find the ways how update firmware easier and the technology is very complex, I mean BiosGuard, and uh, it's hard to implement, uh, follow all the points for specification, I think, because it's why they uh, make some rooms for attacker. But let's discuss what, what uh, Intel BiosGuard uh, doing. So actually, uh, first of all, uh, it's armoring spy flash access and uh, access uh, controlled by uh, BiosGuard ACM. Uh, this partially implemented on microcode and PCH and actually using an embedded controller. And uh, also, it's why I show uh, some previous slide when the embedded controller not been signed. And, uh, but uh, as example, if this platform will uh, use uh, the BiosGuard, but embedded controller will not sign it. It's, it's some interesting things can be happens, right? Um, <clears throat> so, and uh, all the authentication for the BIOS updates now in ACM. Uh, but uh, some of the vendors uh, still have a room when we can program uh, firmware uh, with a physical access by uh, flash, uh, flash programming tool. And also, uh, post-update verification only rely on Intel BootGuard integrity. And here is my targets for reverse engineering. Here is uh, the list of my targets for reverse engineering. I look inside SMM uh, drivers. I 
a look inside ACM and also uh, check the format of the BIOS updates uh, because it, it was different. Here is a list of the components uh, which are uh, using by, uh, by BIOS Guard. And, uh, it, and actually very interesting because we can see uh, eight different drivers, some of them in platform initialization state, some of them on SMM and a Dixie. So it's a huge attack surface because we have like three different SMM drivers and uh, BIOS Guard services, uh, it's specific uh, a model which is actually executes the BIOS Guard script. So, and uh, here's some artifacts how, because actually SMM drivers for the BIOS Guard can be in loaded, but uh, the technology will be not enabled just because uh, some of the developers, it's lazy to remove so from the firmware image, it still appears on the platform, but not use it. So how we can know the platform is using the BIOS Guard? Uh, this signature has been reconstructed and uh, all uh, American Megatrends PFAT, oh, actually all um, uh, BIOS Guard update uh, packages have this signature, uh, AMI PFAT, AMI BIS GD, uh, and also if the platform using the BIOS Guard, the firmware variable, BIOS Guard capsule variable uh, appears. In, uh, but actually, uh, 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 you can't modify this firmware variable outside SMM, only SMM driver do. And uh, also, uh, this GUID for uh, ACM exists only when the BIOS guard really used. So how uh, AMI BIOS guard, guard format looks like. So we have uh, BIOS guard header, script, and firmware update uh, package. And uh, also in the, the BIOS uh, guard header, we can see uh, uh, interesting things like a firmware security version number and embedded controller security version number. And that's actually been very interesting to find that because uh, that's mean embedded controller using by some of the services of the BIOS guard. And um, I, I start thinking about this discovery with the BIOS guard script and uh, when I uh, actually found some of the comments, um, I, I, I uh, f uh, been conclude this language is a Turing complete language executed by ACM model and BIOS guard services, actually the SMM driver, which is pass the control to ACM with a specific command. And BIOS guard script support operations, which is uh, communicating with a spy flash chip. So here is um, operations which is I restore. Uh, it's load store, which is can like load and store the byte or word value, uh, CMP, copy, jump or conditional jump, and also most interesting comment and read the key hash, which is in uh, firmware programmable fuse. It's uh, American Megatreads bias guard commands. Uh, uh, one of the most uh, interesting is, of course, uh, write and read and erase because it's using over uh, bias, bias guard update process. And these comments actually partially can be used inside the SMM driver. And it's quite interesting because it's destroying consistency uh, of uh, technology, security technology because uh, in ideal world, it should be only ACM model, which is control uh, all the write and read operations for the spy flash. But in the real world, uh, we have partially controlled operations from ECMM driver. Here's the components and uh, what they do uh, for the BIOS guard. And actually, uh, we can see uh, for the platform initialization stage, we have capsule update validation. That's actually mean uh, the update process, uh, it's a bit different with uh, previous update process which is used uh, SEC SMI flash and SMI flash drivers because uh, actually platform going to some uh, 
some reboot state, but it stopped, and then platform initialization driver start uh, not deep reboot. It's like not a sleep. It's S5, uh, and then uh, PA driver trigger it and verify the capsule update. It's actually make a bit fuzzy and different, difficult because we always uh, don't don't have a feedback uh, from the system because if you did something wrong, it just freezes, and then after reboot, you lose uh, all the state of this fuzzing context. Also, um, in SMM, we have a bias guard SMM driver, which is response for recoveries, uh, rec um, for uh, firmware recovery services, and um, interesting thing, it has some SMI handlers, which is uh, not communicating directly with the operating system, but it's actually have some uh, parameters passing over CPI tables, and it's actually fuzzable. Let's discuss a bit more about ACM. And um, ACM, it's authenticated code model, and um, b before... Uh, I, I seen only ACM models developed by Intel and also signed, actually all ACM, ACM models signed by Intel because uh, verification uh, uh, routine inside the microcode. And uh, ACM executes inside uh, ACRAM. And uh, ACRAM is specific cache state when uh, one core will be dedicated to read, uh, to execute uh, inside the cache in uh, non-invicted mode. And it's pretty much interesting because uh, we, and um, uh, ACM model usually executed on early state boot, uh, booting state of the platform, but uh, some of these SMM drivers can uh, reload and execute uh, uh, during uh, or Dixie phase too. So, um, very interesting thing, uh, what I find out when I reverse engineered ACM models, it's ACM models, it's mixed, uh, uh, developed on mixed between C and assembly language. That's pretty interesting because uh, development teams can apply the static analysis tool, I mean like, uh, usual static analysis products uh, for, uh, for uh, finding the vulnerabilities in the C code, but here is assembly, it destroy some um, uh, the path to find vulnerabilities and uh, it doesn't work there. So, and actually assembly code, it's uh, around 30% in ACM models. And okay, what kind of ACM models we have inside uh, the BIOS update? And we do have uh, SNIT, and currently actually SNIT and SCLEAN is one model. It, it's uh, TXT related, and Intel BootGuard, and Intel BIOSGuard. But um, Alex Ionesco tweeted uh, in 2017 December about new ECM model discovered in the file system in, uh, in Windows Server. And specifically this uh, ACM related with TXT and it's locked uh, the secure boot state for guests inside the Hyper-V cloud. Um, here is a format of recovered format of ACM model. It's undocumented and uh, we can see it has an uh, entry point and also signatures. Uh, RSA, PSS, signature inside, uh, exponent, public key, and uh, header, and of course entry point for starting point for execution. And uh, uh, most of the models, it's around like uh, 32 kilobytes to uh, most bigger one, it was uh, 256 kilobytes for BIOS guard. Here is ACM header, full ACM header recovered. And actually, I will be release um, the model for either for loading ACMs uh, 
Red, uh, before I developed only for BootGuard, but currently I made a generic model and will release after the conference. And um, what is an interesting thing, before it was found the vulnerabilities in ACM only in ACM need, and mostly by invisible things labs. And uh, we can see it was only three public known vulnerabilities, uh, which is privilege escalation uh, to ACM. Um, but <laughs> it's privilege escalation, two of them it's privilege escalation by code execution. So, and uh, 2009 and 2011. And uh, one of them actually pretty uh, clear uh, described in, in, inside the paper Intel TXT uh, via SNIT uh, hijacking. But it was no more uh, issues found publicly, but we have, uh, as you remember on previous slide, C and a mixed assembler code. So, and um, mostly all the ACM models developed by Intel uh, use it non-invicted mode and have some dependencies by chipset. So you can take one ACM, uh, put inside the different BIOS update for different platform and load there. So it will be not executed. And uh, for, uh, for BootGuard, it actually verifies uh, K-manifest and uh, Intel initial, uh, initial boot block, IBB. And actually, I will a bit, a bit later on the next slide describe what that means. But uh, it's a parser, pretty complex parser inside ACM model. So here is a, a flow for the Intel BootGuard. And uh, uh, we can see how actually many routines and code blocks we have by this graph. And here is a call graph from the entry point and uh, what, what actually uh, this ACM d does. So it uh, uh, has a few different parsers for K-manifest, uh, IBB-manifest, and also uh, it's enabled some of specific features for Intel BootGuard. And I was thinking, okay, if I take old ACM model from previous platform and uh, make a bin diff with a new one, what I can find, in, find there? What I can discover? And it was pretty interesting because some of the flows has a lot of changes and also actually uh, specifically for uh, BootGuard, uh, I found few patches, integer overflows and uh, around three or four memory corruption bugs inside these parsers. So uh, that's actually straight means like we can find the vulnerabilities inside ACM, but it's a bit difficult to exploit these vulnerabilities. But uh, ACM models can be loaded from the file system uh, for some of them, as you can see from uh, screenshot uh, of Ale Alex Arnescu tweet, uh, Microsoft TXT model signed by Intel uh, loaded from the file system because it's loaded by uh, Hyper-V. Uh, it's not loaded by Hyper-V, it passed to SMM by Hyper-V and then it's loaded in the invicted, uh, non-invicted mod hash. It's pretty interesting and it's much easier to fast from file systems Then you have a BIOS update, you, you, you change it a bit and then uh, you need flash another system and <laughs> boot and again uh, make this loop. It's pretty hard and take a lot of time. And um, now one of the most interesting part uh, about new bypasses for boot guard. So, uh, BootGuard armoring secure boot and uh, actually most uh, interesting thing, it's locked uh, uh, root of trust inside the hardware um, and um, been developed in 2013, but it was few the changes because when I re reverse engineer in different versions, I find, some, f find out some of the changes in the technology. Uh, most interesting mode, it's verified boot where it's locked uh, root of trust ha hash for uh, vendor key inside uh, a field program will fuse. And uh, there it's actually attack surface 
uh, getting more complicated because we have now a hardware component. Um, it's Intel boot guard operating modes, but actually uh, most interesting and actually most of the vendors use it when they measure it boot and verify it boot uh, enabled together and that's mean like uh, we have uh, a root of trust locked in the hardware and also some of the paths uh, for uh, most uh, software mods for sleep and uh, for uh, for hibernate sometimes use only TPF. It's a boot guard flow uh, when uh, CPU actually uh, from the reset locked vector before uh, even uh, BIOS will be enabled, start uh, booting and uh, getting the control. It start uh, CPU microcode flow, which is actually uh, execute uh, uh, ACM model and verify uh, IBB uh, initial boot block, which is usually cover um, SEC and PA phases. Here is a chain of trust for uh, boot guard. So, um, as we can see, uh, we have uh, some of the relations with uh, memory engine because memory engine responsible for programming uh, field programmable fuse. And also we have a key manifest and uh, initial uh, block manifest where is actually initial boot block stored. And also we do have a lot of different components, but for us, one of the most interesting is the signatures and what the signatures cover and the hashes values. And we can see OM root public key. And also uh, we, we see this OM root public key uh, being um, signed uh, in K-manifest. And it's important for the future because, remember, for the future because I will show uh, how, we ha how the vendors actually implement this flow wrongly. So it's blocked by hardware, this component's inside the firmware, and what's actually validation flows doing? So it's uh, verify by ACM uh, security version number and uh, uh, execute ACM then and uh, after signature verification. Oh, actually it's uh, verified boot flow from ECMM. It's a bit different. Oh, actually here's interesting thing because uh, when uh, you uh, close and open your lid, uh, the vendor's always fighting how fast you get some picture on your screen. And of course, if you go all, all the flow uh, for refining all the boot, uh, root, uh, root of trust, chain of trust, it will be pretty long time. And um, they implement a specific SMM driver, which is only check the store uh, previous state of uh, verification flow. If it is good, then it's passing control to the operating system. And um, it's actually the flow, what, is, uh, what, what this uh, uh, SMM driver does. And um, also, here is a chain of trust uh, for, for, the, for, for the OM uh, K hash. And we can see it is, uh, we have K-manifest, uh, which is cover KMID, and we have OM key hash, which is only covered by K signature. Uh, here is a K-manifest, and uh, also it's been recovered uh, by reverse engineering, obviously, this SMM driver. So, uh, we can see a few interesting things. Uh, IBB manifest hash, and actually uh, uh, RSA signature, a public key for, for the components. So, and uh, the hash, which is actually programmed inside the programmable fuse, it's there. So it's stored in this uh, particular uh, volume inside the BIOS update. Here is BPM, uh, Bootguard Policy Manifest, and it's quite interesting because um, it has uh, IBB segments, and IBB segments uh, showing 
the coverage for uh, components inside the BIOS by, uh, by, uh, by hashes value. And uh, it was also recovered. And uh, when, uh, when, when I uh, discovered these things, I started thinking how I can automate to verify uh, IBB for all different BIOS updates because like, we have all the values and this coverage pretty much uh, easy to, to uh, calculate. So uh, I commit to BIOS guard uh, oh, UEFI tool for, for verifying boot guard uh, values. Uh, last year in October, it was first commit and then um, much more improvements in uh, end of November. So actually, attacker never attack uh, standard, right? So it's always uh, looking inside specific implementations and it's pretty smart because why we should look on the standard, let's look how it's implemented, where is actually vulnerabilities exist. I look inside by bootguard uh, Dixie validation flow, which is actually uh, verifying one of the transition flag when you open the lid and uh, return your system from the sleep. And uh, Actually, I start looking more, more deeply on this transition and uh, so error messages sometimes uh, provide uh, much more context for reverse engineering than other code and uh, these errors um, says like uh, about a specific verification or the state which is uh, being in the true when um, uh, the, the chain of trust being verified correctly. So I mean, wow, that's interesting. And uh, after actually I showed this bug on uh, Black Hat uh, USA last year, uh, Alex Yermolov from uh, Embedded uh, discover the same bug inside Intel NAC and been reported to Intel and uh, described uh, some details on the blog. But uh, let's uh, discuss more specific implementation details. details. Uh, it, it was my target platform uh, and uh, it has an American Medicatrans bias and um, the same as Intel NAC use why the vulnerability being the same. And um, actually, for the boot guard, uh, they did almost everything properly, but they not lock it IMI because it has a read and write access. And also, it's been a problem with uh, hash because it's been not programmed. Oh, it's not been locked. It's been programmed, but not locked by uh, field programmable fuse. And that's been quite interesting for me because we have open MU region and programmable field fuse programmed by uh, EME. So you can uh, actually use a specific uh, SMM driver to uh, just erase this hash inside and it will be pretty much that's it. And also, uh, they actually use measured boot plus verified boot, which is most stronger mode, but it's not helps because, um, because of these bugs. And let's discuss how actually it's worked. So this part in hardware don't uh, exist anymore because uh, we already uh, know uh, we can uh, clean the hash. And actually I did it in previous uh, presentation show, show it in more details on it. And our root of trust now only firmware. So, but okay, so it's already fixed when they're programmed the hash, right? So we have uh, everything done uh, correctly. We have disabled emu regions, we have uh, programmed uh, field programmable fuse, everything is done. So what the attacker can do in this case. So, but remember, uh, 
this root, uh, root of uh, trust uh, for the key, right? And what if vendor don't verify your M cache, uh, key cache? And actually, I reverse engineered on Lenovo on X230 uh, series, they, for ThinkPad, they doesn't verify the key hash, the vendor hash. So that means they break the root of chain of trust, but it's implemented correctly. I don't know what it was the reason, but uh, some of the, the recent update being changed uh, in last two weeks ago. And, um, but previous updates, if you not update your bias, uh, still have this, I don't know, vulnerability, but it looks like as a backdoor for developers. <laughs> also, um, uh, for uh, BootGuard uh, flow validation, as I s mentioned, we developed a uh, specific uh, UEFI 2 version and uh, my commit actually uh, validated uh, all the boot guard flow, uh, which is covered, which is not. Uh, here is a blog post link where uh, a bit more describe it about uh, the issues. And uh, what you can find from uh, output of a uh, new version of uh, UEFI 2, you can actually find uh, all information about ACM, all the keys, uh, and actually everything, and also the, the coverage for initial boot block. And um, uh, one of the firmwares, which I uh, recently looked, um, don't cover everything properly, everything being covered properly. Uh, pay, uh, DXF, everything. So everything covered by IBB and vendor hash. So, but it's few sections, uh, which is, um, uh, has a row, uh, one volume in the pay, which is, has a row section, which is not covered. It's three row sections, and okay, what is inside? And uh, they just use a bit on the beginning of this uh, row uh, file. And the rest of the file, uh, it just uh, has some constant values, which doesn't make sense because I change it for check it. And okay, let's look inside how the pay driver, platform initialization, drivers, loader works. And uh, okay, it's uh, straightforward. Uh, uh, P file loader. So it's a load uh, Microsoft uh, portable executable files. But okay, and um, uh, this header, uh, this uh, prototype of the function you can find in Tiana core. And uh, it's the same as implemented on American Megatrends biases. And okay, it's authenticated state, so yeah, I can't do much there, but let's look, maybe it is something broken there. I look inside the load file and okay, here is also authenticated state, but in American Megatrends it's always true, oh, false, so it's never used because uh, Pay phase, uh, everything loaded pretty fast. This phase should be go very fast, and it's covered by should be covered by IBB. Why we should check the signatures for all the file when it's loaded, and also uh, specifics of uh, lo loader pay loader of uh, pay. It's just uh, parse the form uh, firmware vol volumes find uh, the binary which is, has uh, the header of uh, Microsoft Partable executable file and start loading because it start part of the header, discover the image size, and then start loaded. And uh, no verification for anything there. But okay, we can actually load the pay driver, but what, what we can do next? So, because it will, this pay will be locked and uh, we actually can't do much there. Most interesting, uh, most interesting thing is getting inside the system management mode, right? And uh, here is a path actually exists because we, we have a pay driver which is can discover the boot services, which is actually has a pointer to all loaded 
drivers by Wakate protocol. So uh, boot services can f easily find by the signature just in the memory or, or during the platform initialization phase. And then we hook Wakate protocol and inject malicious driver by this uh, Wakate protocol function. And uh, this structure actually exists inside uh, UEFI specification in the header. And all the constants also there, so it's kind of unhorse for finding inside the memory. And actually, it's very interesting because uh, you can see clearly like implementations and uh, the standards, it's very different, right? And sometimes you can discover very obvious bugs um, and uh, also, it's not expected being by uh, original developers because, okay, we have a role section, but what the attacker can do there because it's not executable file, it's just the data. But specific of the payloader allow us make something more interesting, right? And uh, in the end, I want to say, so it's, two different realities between uh, developers and uh, the attackers because they think in different ways and it shows the importance to connect two different worlds in in, in a very productive way for making products more secure, right? Thank you for your attention. And, uh, We have uh, actually around uh, five minutes for the questions. So thank you for your lecture. Um, I'd like to ask uh, you to expand about the communication methods between SMM and ACM, if you could. Okay, so uh, uh, the question is uh, how uh, SMM uh, can use the ACM, right? Or how it's connected, because actually uh, the execution domain for ACM and SMM is different, so SMM can be responsible only for loading uh, ACM to the cache and uh, specify uh, non-invicted mode and uh, raise uh, uh, some specific value for signal to CPU for execute that. And it can execute it only on the dedicated core, uh, which is uh, make a bit more difficult to exploit some race condition bugs. So the so the SMM just loads the ACM into the cache, runs it with a... No, actually it's signal CPU to load the ACM to the, uh, ACM to the cache. Uh, SMM doesn't operate directly uh, with, this, uh, uh, with the cache in this way. So it's uh, set up the mod, signal CPU, and CPU loaded... Uh, oh, SMM uh, map it... Oh, ACM and uh, CPU execute uh, ACM model uh, inside the non-invicted mod cache. Yeah. Okay, also known you. as the cache as a RAM. And uh, other thing actually, the ACM is just a binary blob. The thing is it has a signature which is validated by microcode. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward code just in binary blob. Sometimes uh, some very weird parsers there and uh, for me, it's quite surprised. It's no a lot of issues been found on public because only three issues appears. But uh, binary diffing with previous versions only bootguard show a lot of issues been patched silently. 